What do you do in the evening when you don't know what to do? Read a book, play a game, every night is just the same. What do you say if I tell you how to keep from feeling blue? My advice is good to take and it's easier to do. When you're all alone, any old night, and you're feeling out of tune. Take up your hat, close up your flat, and get out and get under the moon. Underneath the bright silvery light, you'll be feeling better soon. Take up your hat, close up your flat, and get out and get under the moon. Look, look, look at the stars above, look, look, look at those sweeties, love, oh boy, give me a night in June. I mean it all you got to do, any old night, when you're feeling out of tune. Take up your hat, close up your flat, and get out and get under the moon. Well, hello everybody. How are y'all doing tonight? Welcome to a Monday, not Sunday, Thriller Chiller live stream. Hopefully everybody's doing okay on this first of the day of the week evening. We'll let some folks pop in. If you're here and you can hear me, say hello. Sorry, I don't know that one. Yay, and Alexa is trying to kill me. I would never hurt anyone. <laughs> and that was that was nice of her. So we had to mute Alexa. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say sorry though. Alexa, I'm sorry. No worries. Okay, now we mute her again. So hope for everybody's doing okay. If there's anybody in here with me, be sure you give the stream a thumbs up. Pass it around. Uh, if you are with me, you'll notice that I'll be promoting myself mainly tonight <laughs> from the screen. We'll see how that goes. Some fun things. I have the viewer thing covered up. Maybe I shouldn't have it covered up. We have one concurrent viewer. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice of people to be a concurrent user. I'm going to pop this back up. Well, hopefully everybody's doing okay tonight. Probably a long weekend. A lot of haunted attractions opening up. Some of them are still 
in the midst of building so they can get opened up next weekend. Some of them aren't opening up at all. It's kind of sad. Hopefully everybody got notified the stream was lit. Super lit. If not, then that's okay too. I'll just sit here and talk to myself. Which is highly not unusual. And that's also okay. If I had popcorn, I'd be eating it. And you'd be listening to me eat it. But I'll just ramble on until I know there's a few people in here. And Heck, if we don't get anybody in here, it may be a super short string. Super short. And let's see, what else is going on in the world? Texas is getting rained upon pretty heavy from a uh, tropical storm at the moment. Louisiana is getting some of that rain as well. Uh, might actually end up being a low-end hurricane by the time it hits, but they don't know yet. And we got plenty of the hurricane season to go, unfortunately. I wonder if I just got really quiet if anybody would say anything. <coughs> oh, no. But it'll be highly unusually unusual if nobody shows up. I may or may not play. Not. <laughs> But totally understandable. I think this is also the first day of some schools opening. I don't know. I do not know. Maybe. Maybe not. Or, I don't know, maybe the stream's not working at all. Maybe I should open up uh, and read a story just to bide my time, <laughs> bide your time, bide everybody's time. I wonder if I end up breaking something doing that. Probably. Let's see if I do break something. Oh, and I broke it. Hey, there it is. Nope. Nope, there it is. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. Let me fix that. Okay, now, now it's fixed. I bet you I'm the concurrent user. What happens if I click off this page? I don't think anything will happen. I gotta be sure I don't click off this. I've done that before. I've hit naughty things and things have, have happened. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can ask Google a question. Edgar Allan Poe stories. Let's see if I break something. What happens if I click that to do that? Let's see if I break anything. Let's see if I break the stream. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, 
That's cool. There's a website with some interesting Poe stories. I'm amusing myself at the moment. Let's bookmark it. Let's bookmark it for no reason. Um, bookmark, bookmark bar, yay. And now there's no concurrent users. <laughs> there is one like, however. Some of these I have never, I've never heard of these before in my life. Mm -hmm. There's the Telltale Heart, one of my favorites. Two concurrent users and one like. And then people just whisk away. Hmm. It's kind of cool. Well, we'll see who comes in or who doesn't, and maybe I'll just start reading the Telltale Heart. <laughs> Hey, Devil's Gate. I'm here. You're here. That's about it. How are you doing? Hopefully everything's working right. I'm not sure if YouTube sent out notifications, but hopefully, uh, hopefully the stream's working. But uh, yeah, it's Monday. Could be because it's a Monday stream and not a Sunday stream. Maybe that's messing people up. I don't know. How are you doing? You doing okay? I was just getting ready to read the Telltale Heart to myself out loud on live stream. Because nobody was here. <laughs> My guess is if uh, literally nobody shows up, we may make it a short stream. Maybe people are worn out from Halloween Horror Nights. Maybe people are just worn out. Good to hear all is good. All is good on my end, too. I'm promoting myself tonight on the screen, my Facebook page, and the yet-to-be-completed website. You can go to it. There's links. Yeah, that's about it. I figured I would promote myself tonight. Talk about my stuff I'm going to start selling. Some of my... A lot of my Halloween stuff that I've got triplicate and duplicates of. I need to start downsizing. Tremendously, I need to start downsizing. More than just Halloween stuff. So, I was going to do that. Some folks may come in like in at the bottom of the hour. Some folks may not comment at all. That's fine. Devil says, I keep seeing people pop in and out. <laughs> Yeah, it may not be any of the regulars. It may just be people coming in to go like, what the hell's going on? And a lot of people don't like the static image. They just, people are just so used to seeing somebody on screen talking. And since I don't have the Flame of Doom up and running, then. Although I probably could put the Flame of Doom really small. Let's see if I break something. Let's see if I break the Flame of Doom. 
We'll make the flame of doom really small. I'll put it like right, right here. And see if I can get it to. Oh, flame of doom might be too small. The, is it too small? Maybe it's too small. I don't know. Or maybe I broke the flame of doom. Hey, Sean, what's up, buddy? Thanks for coming in. And there's Nightbot. Well, I believe I may have broken the flame of doom. What, what did I just break? I feel as though I just broke something. Oh, I broke the stream loots. I made the stream loots too small. Okay, let's just make the stream loots really big. Okay. There's the flame of doom. There we go. There we go. Oh my God. There's the flame of doom. You may have seen things moving all over the place. How's things going, Sean? How's the build going? And I don't see the flame of doom moved yet. I'm going to take a second. Or maybe you see it. Then we get the flame of doom going. Sean says, "What's up? I'm working on my yard haunt as we are on live. Nice. There we go. I'm just now seeing the flame of doom moving. How's the uh, how's the yard haunt going?" Yay, the flame of doom is now visible. I'm gonna scooch it. I'm gonna scooch it just a little bit. Scooch it just a wee bit. There we go. There we go. Now it's still still not centered, but that's okay. Uh I say Vic is having the same problems with lighting as we do. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I saw the the video he did. Um, uh, which, by the way, Hump for Heroes actually has a Facebook page. Uh, he's been posting a lot on his Facebook group, but uh, I took over his Facebook page because <laughs> that's where he's going to get most interactions from of uh, regular customers. But uh, yeah, it looks like I don't know if, if maybe um, maybe he had to put more lighting because. Maybe the fire marshal said he did. It's 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 some really cool lights, but it's kind of bright. But maybe it's so dark back there that he's got to have some sort of light. Sean says we have twenty five percent up right now. That's awesome. Um, I've been doing uh, yard cleaning, getting ready. I'm hoping I only have to mow one more time before the weather makes it where I don't have to mow anymore. But uh, it's easier for me to mow my yard prior to decorating, but uh, I've been taking quite a bit of inventory, lots of inventory, my God. So I'm gonna end up, uh, I'm gonna end up selling, uh, selling Devil's Gate, I'm gonna end up selling uh, duplicates and triplicates of stuff that I've got here. So I've got, I've got to lower some of the, some stuff I've had for, I've got like some vintage gimme products. I got like a couple of them, I'm gonna sell Keep one of everything I've got, but I'm gonna start selling duplicates of Halloween stuff, I guess on eBay or on the website or both. And then I've just got tons of other stuff. I've got just all kinds of vintage stuff that I need to get rid of. <sighs> so it's driving me crazy. Sean says, but we've added more square footage than we ever had. That's awesome, dude. 
what do you think the average square footage you've got now is if you've got if you've got a a, a number in your head? Probably a lot. Probably a good chunk. Uh, by the way, if you have not liked my Home Haunts Facebook page, it is there up on the screen. Facebook.com forward slash Haunted Cyphers 1910. And the website's there as well, which I'm still working on, but it is fairly active. Links are active on it for Buy Me a Coffee, eBay, Facebook. I'm hoping to have the website 100% in about a week and a half, two weeks or less. And you start posting on Facebook more too. Yeah. Some of some of our normal folks may not show up tonight just because uh, some of them were pretty uh, rocking at Halloween Horror Nights this weekend. So they might be tired. It might be at work. Maybe both. Yeah, I was excited to see some of Vic's uh, walkthrough. I was like, that is actually pretty cool. Um, I'm going to recommend, since those lights are there, I think he said they're 15 watts a piece. It's quite a bit of light. I think some of them he could use like a latex paint on, like maybe splotch them up a little bit to reduce some light, change the coloring a little bit. And then if he doesn't like it, uh, you can just peel latex paint right back off. Just do like a real thin, splotchy layer. And uh, he'd still get some of the lights. And some of them he can leave untouched. But it may soften things up a bit, make it a little bit more creepy. I'm also guessing they're LED, but I might be wrong. If he comes on tonight, I'll ask him. If they're incandescent, he can make a, a flicker, a flicker circuit for maybe a few of the strands or something. I don't he the flicker. I don't think the flicker circuit would work if they're LED because it it, it would just burn them out since they're non dimmable. And uh, as far as regular haunt news, uh, I've seen a couple more haunted attractions mid grade deciding they're not going to open this year again. I uh, saw one today close permanently after 20 years. Kind of, kind of sad. Sean says we are right now up to, uh, like from last year, 500 square feet to around 1,200 to 14. That's awesome, dude. It's always good to grow bigger and then have fun at it. Definitely need to see, excuse me, more pictures. Ones that you can divulge. Hopefully I'll be starting out with some pictures myself. I'm running probably about a week or two behind, which is fine. I've had to get a lot, a lot of other things accomplished. Both for Halloween and not Halloween. So, at least I'm being productive. And we've had some kind of wet weather around here. So, no guilt. But, we're supposed to have quite a bit of rain starting on Wednesday, I think, from that system that's skirting skirting the coast of Texas. If it's low light, uh, five to eight watt LED, you can use the flicker. Hmm. Uh, 
I did, I think that he, you know, the string light, they're very cool and I'm glad they're not brighter than what they are, but uh, you know, Vic's thing, but I really think that he needs to splotch them up a little bit because he was saying that uh, he could, if he needed to, he could take some out uh, or cover them up. Now I can't remember, but if I think if he just took like some some red latex paint and maybe thinned it out a little bit and just went up there and just streaked the lights, you know, paint them. Um, hell, he could even just take a a, a small bucket and, and he'd have to make make the latex paint a little bit thin enough where it'll still dry. He could just reach up there in the bucket and just let the lights dip in the bucket. And then they would drip themselves into a cool kind of a blood effect. And he wouldn't hurt anything. He'd have to wear a hat he wasn't happy with. <laughs> hey, Keith, what's up, buddy? How are you doing, sir? Oh, uh, probably another person I should tell since you you are the the uh, buyer of Halloween things. I was uh, letting everybody know, uh, if you look on the screen, you'll notice I'm promoting myself tonight. I'm going to do that probably a couple of nights just, just for the hell of it. Uh, be sure you give my Facebook page a like. And the website is up and running. Uh, it's not complete, but uh, I've put buttons for uh, my Facebook page, eBay, and uh, buy me a coffee. Uh, I was telling everybody that I've been doing some extensive inventory around my house and out, outside of my <laughs> big ass shed, and uh, uh, I, I've, I'm reminding myself that I have duplicates and triplicates of a lot of Halloween things, like some vintage stuff that uh, I'm going to start selling. I need to start. I need to start lowering down the stuff I got in my house. I'm going to sell other things besides uh, the Halloween stuff, but. Uh, the website has the eBay button, and uh, hopefully in the next few days, I'm going to start putting up some of my vintage Halloween stuff that I've got duplicates of. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. I should sell, promote. Uh, I'm also going to be uh, have a shop on the website. Uh, we can buy T-shirts, stuff like that, uh, some fun things for the house. But uh, I've decided that I've gotten old enough now that a lot of the stuff that I've accumulated and collected over literally decades um, that I've just kept pristine and, and to the core. I'm never going to make a museum. I, I, I bought this stuff just because I thought it was cool, but it's time to let some of the duplicates and triplicates go. Keep my top shelf stuff. Yeah, yeah some of it I'm not. I, I would, but um, I mean, I've got, like I said, I've got, there's, there's some Nightmare Before Christmas stuff that I've got, some anniversary stuff that, you know, I would buy like two of it just in case or three of it just in case. And I don't need two or three of it just in case. Um, I've collected a a lot of stuff in general, but uh, especially Halloween stuff. So I figured since we're going into the Halloween season, this is when people may be looking on eBay or whatever for stuff. Uh, and of course, if, if somebody sees something that I that they like and I know them, and they don't want to go through eBay. I have no problem doing it that way. But uh, it, it's time for me to relinquish this hoard of stuff that I've accumulated over literally a lifetime, just about. So uh, I'll, I'll probably Wednesday night when when I'm back on, um, I'll have some stuff and, and remind people if there's anything somebody likes. Uh, it's some cool Halloween shit. I will say it's stuff you can't get anymore. Uh, he says I haven't bought a whole lot this year. I the I haven't bought anything. This year. I refuse to buy anything this year. I if I'm sitting here putting the effort into putting stuff on eBay and selling it on an online shop or whatever, I don't need anything. There's there's some cool stuff. Oh, quick one, uh, Keith. I actually um, did go to Home Depot yesterday. Took some of my own pictures of stuff. There is some cool stuff there. Some stuff that literally, if I wasn't already drowning in Halloween stuff here in the house, I mean, very, very grateful to have the stuff that I do and I've accumulated over the multiple decades. Um, there's some stuff that I'd be like, oh, that's cool. But it's, it's not cool enough for me. Like, I've got to have it. 
Um, like I said, I've got, I'm very, very oddly thankful for the stuff that I've got here. I, I can, I, you know, I've been shopping in my own house for real. There's stuff that I'm like, holy shit, I bought this 20 years ago. I totally forgot about it. Oh, <laughs> and there's two of them here. Yay. Purging, yeah. Devil, uh, Devil Gate said, I only bought wood, glue, etc. from Home Depot so far. He says, I bought the Home Depot pumpkins. Yeah, the pumpkins are cool. I just, I mean, I've got, oh my God. I don't know, I've got, I mean, I've just got a lot of stuff. Like I said, I'm, it makes me laugh that as I've been like refining this stuff, I'm like, when did I buy this? I'm like, oh, this is 18 years old. Oh, okay. So I've just decided since we're going into the season and this is when people would be buying you know, collectible vintage stuff. I've got gimme stuff. I've got um, uh, these two, they're animated uh, gimme, uh, I think they're called Dr. Shock Labs or something. I, I don't know. They're, they're really kind of cool, but there's these bubbling test tubes. Uh, this gauge works. It makes bubbling noise. It's super cool. But I've got two of them. And um, earlier today, I was like, well, okay, these are cool. I bought these, I don't even know, 18 years ago, 15 years ago, I don't even know. But they're rare. And I've got two of them. And um, just for shits and giggles, I went on eBay, and somebody sold one on eBay a month ago for $130 plus shipping. I'm like, Jesus Christ. But it's a vintage, rare, cool-ass lights and bubbling noise. It's really cool. So I've got two of them, so I'm going to put one of them on eBay <laughs> because I don't need two of them. So it's stuff like that. I mean, I've just got, God, I've just got so much stuff. Very, like I said, very thankful for it. I'm not complaining to myself or out, and, out into the ether or the universe, but it's time to let some of this stuff go to somebody who's going to use it or cherish it or buy it and then give it to their kids when the kids get older or... Or they just are collectors. I got to stop being a collector. Yeah, Keith, I make, Keith says, I make so much stuff, why buy it? Which is true. Which is very true. Like I said, over the course of decades and decades and decades, I've just been a collector because I'm a Halloween person. And there is stuff out there that you're like, well, that is actually pretty cool. And I, now I must have it. And the other three that are on the shelf. So, um, there's collectors out there. And I, there's other stuff besides Halloween stuff. I've got vintage electronic games, and I've got a few Dungeons and Dragons items. Hell, Zach might be interested in. Uh, I, my goal is, by the end of this month, to have a plethora of stuff for sale out in the wild, especially a majority of the stuff I know I'm going to sell, my Halloween stuff. Heck, he says, I fully met him a Halloween hoarder. I, I am too, I, and I've been for a long time. But there again, like I said, um, why have two or three things sitting on a shelf in pristine condition, literally just sitting on a shelf, when I can go ahead and, and actually make a profit on it from what I bought it for because now it's vintage or collectible or rare or whatever. What's interesting is, about those uh, gimme um, animated Halloween labs, little mini things. Um, anybody that knows uh, Sven Gulli, Sven Gulli has one. Months ago, I was watching, I was at my parents, we were watching Sven Gulli, and I just happened to notice, and I told my parents, I'm like, oh my God, you see that little lab thing in the back? And my parents were like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I was like, I've got two of those. And my mom just, my parents just started laughing. Both of them did. Uh, and, and it's a, a rare item. Um, I even know where I bought them from. I bought them from Albertsons. When Albertsons was around and they actually had Halloween stuff in one of their aisles. So they're not in the original boxes. I remember taking them out of the boxes ages ago. Which you don't think about it at the time. But it doesn't, it doesn't oddly enough for these things, it doesn't lower their value. Get a little bit more of the boxes with it, but the boxes were not super sturdy. And they were kind of boring, quite honestly. The box hid most of the uh, most of the uh, the little gimme product. 
But I've got, like I said, I've got Nightmare Before Christmas stuff that I'm going to put. I've got Anniversary Nightmare Before Christmas. I've got multiple. It's all, it's, it's just, I'm going to be wearing myself out putting stuff for sale, which is fine. But on uh, cypress1910.com, the website, there is at the top and the bottom a link to the eBay store. And I actually will be selling stuff on the website too. Like I said, stuff that I make, like shirts and stuff. That was one of the reasons why I put that up there tonight, trying to get a little bit of traffic to my Facebook page and my website. Which, oddly enough, Google has crawled, and I got an email that they're, they've crawled it, and uh, it's now searchable on Google, which is awesome. But uh, So I, like I said, Wednesday when I'm on, I'm gonna, I'll remind folks or people that weren't here tonight, let them know, and there should be some stuff up. If it, even if you just want to see the crazy shit that I actually have accumulated over the course of a half a century, almost, 30, 40 years, like literally. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how much I can get rid of for... I don't have a lot of Christmas stuff. A few Christmas things I have, I, I've only got one or two of. Or what? just one of, I should say. Not something I'm looking forward to get rid of. He says, the older I get, I know space is more important sometimes. Yeah. It's a big house. I got a, I'm very fortunate. Big house, lots of room. Um, the shed out there is, is a good size. I've got to clean it up. I've got to get it 100% functional um, and not just have it storing a bunch of stuff. Uh, I got to do some repairs to it. So that's also on the list for this month is, uh, cleaning it out. There's stuff in the shed that I'm going to just put on Craigslist because it's, it's big stuff, non-Halloween stuff. But uh, uh, I, I've got to get it. I've got to get it up and running. Got to do some repairs to the floor in it. There's just a lot of stuff going on. And on top of all that, getting the house ready for Halloween and dealing with the ding-dongs across the street. Won't even go into it. But, uh, but I've, I've definitely... I've definitely got to eliminate some of my, my duplicates. There's just no reason to have them around. And it's the stuff that I have duplicates of, it's like literally I would never use it outside. I would never use and abuse it or put it out in the weather. It's, it's stuff that's very cool, and I bought it for inside the house or to collect it. So even if I just have one of a thing, it'll be taken care of. So that's why I don't need, uh, you know, to have a, just in case I break this one. Because it'd be very rare if I did. He says, you're going to make the shed a workspace. Yes. Um, when I built that shed, I, I built the shed right after Ivan. It took me about eight months. Um, it's a 16 by 24 foot. Uh, and it's about... Uh, it's about 14 to 15 feet tall at, at its peak. Um, I built the trusses and everything. Uh, extremely sturdy. Um, city inspector came out and was like, "Did you? What, do you think it's going to do heavy snow in Florida or something? Because you built this thing for upward and downward uh, structural integrity. I'm like, I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But yeah, the, the idea is um, uh, it... Uh, Right now, I, I can use it to do some work in, but it's almost mainly a storage facility, which is ridiculous. So uh, I'm going to clear it out, sell a bunch of stuff, um, reorganize, put up more shelves, fix the floor. Uh, it's got power. Uh, hell, it's got power and ceiling fans in it. Um, and... Uh, uh, turn it into a actual Halloween workshop. That's my goal for it. Uh, it's extremely sturdy. The skeleton of that thing is, it held up a hickory tree. I mean, like literally held up a hickory tree. So, uh, and held the hickory tree up there for about a year and a half. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, with absolutely no damage to it or the roof. But, um, so yeah, so, the goal with that, especially as it gets a little cooler here in Florida, is um, um, 
and I have all the wood I need. I have everything I need literally here to do the repairs. But uh, it's another one of those things where I need to clear it out. There's a bunch of totes out there. 90% of the totes are Halloween stuff, but it's stuff that I actually use, um, non-duplicate type stuff. So, uh, yeah, so the idea is that it, it, it needs to be, it needs to have some TLC and it needs to be 100% uh, reorganized. Uh, I've already semi-started the process. It's just, it's a little warm. It's, it's just a little warm right now. And it's something I don't have to push myself for, for to do right now. So the biggest thing is really the house. Uh, and like I said, the biggest thing is to, to get as much Halloween stuff listed in every place I need to list it now since we're in the height of the season. Um, so there's, if there is some folks that are Halloween folks that they're looking for that one vintage gimme thing, uh, I'll have it. Maybe, probably, most likely. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, that's that's a big push right now. Uh, I have started uh, I have started um, figuring out what I'm going to do to make my front porch the concession stand for the drive-in theater. Um, I've been doing some electronics. I've been taking some pictures. I actually really need to do video. I need to get into the habit of doing video. So uh, I've, I've really been doing projects day and night. Um, if it's anything from yard work, I have a pretty good size deck in the back um, that uh, I've been doing, uh, starting the repair process. Uh, a half of a hickory tree fell on it from Sally. Didn't do much damage. Nothing I couldn't, take me like two days to fix, but just a lot of stuff. I've been, I've been, been really just, trying to motivate myself to do multiple projects at once. And so far it's been working, so. Um, not to bore anybody with all that mess, but, uh, but definitely my, my big push too is to try and get, um, try and get uh, traffic to the Facebook page and the website and the YouTube channel, which the YouTube channel has actually got a button on the website um, I need to, uh, pump up some more videos on the, on the, on YouTube. I've made a laundry list. I got a laundry list, but the idea is that by my goal is that by the end of November of this year, the shed will be a hundred percent operational exactly the way I want it. Um, so that I can really start cranking electronics stuff and build stuff for Halloween for 2022. Not just for myself, but also uh, uh, probably to sell. I, mostly for me, it'll be electronic stuff. Uh, gadgets, uh, you know, uh, nothing molded, not, nothing like uh, Keith, like you do, or the rest of y'all do. Uh, maybe stuff to put in the stuff that y'all do. LED lighting is going to be probably at the forefront of all of it. Um, I am drawing up plans for a five by five foot by nine foot vacuum form machine for a friend of mine. Uh, and I'm going to help him build it. Um, it's going to be kind of cool when it's done. Uh, I won't have it here, um, but I've been drawing up the plans for that. Uh, so I can get some vacuum form stuff. Uh, and it'll be stuff for not just the Halloween industry, but uh, for, for other things as well. Hey, Danny, you're not late. I was getting concerned. The first 15 minutes, I, I was talking to myself. But then Devil came in, and Sean came in, and Keith came in. I was going to start reading the Telltale Heart to myself, live, out loud. How was, uh, how was uh, Halloween Horror Nights, Danny? Did you enjoy it? I'm glad you got to see Mark. Was it everything you hoped and more? <laughs> hey, Vic. We were talking about you. Sean and I were talking about you a minute ago and your lights. Hey, uh, speaking of, um, 
the lights look really good. Uh, I have an idea for you though. Um, even though they're, I think you said they're what, 15 watts a piece. If you, if you had to dim some of them or something, or you wanted to make it where they still were functional, but kind of creepy. Um, I think that if you took a latex paint and thinned it out just a little bit with, I don't know, water or something, nothing that'll hurt the, the bulbs, um, since they're probably plastic casings, I'm guessing, or they might be, uh, glass, I don't know. Um, you know, maybe, maybe streak them with some, uh, some red paint, give them some color, but make them kind of creepy. So that way it's not like a line of just dark, uh, soft white lighting. You could do different colors or you could do them all in like a streak of red or take some, some, a little bit of diluted latex paint, not super diluted where it still sticks, put it in a cup and maybe just reach up and dip the bulb in the cup and let it drip on its own, have drippy McDrippy lights. Uh, maybe do every other one or something, almost turn them into like a carnival light. But you still have plenty of lights, but it'd give a little color to it and not too, too stark. Just an idea, so. Uh, also, I looked on Haunt Pay Vic and there doesn't seem to be any way to separate the pay it forward. Um, We'll just try to make it as, as easy as possible for people to understand that they can select any night and it doesn't matter. Uh, I looked at it at Haunt Pay for about 30 minutes and they have a gift option, but uh, it's still, it's still, it wouldn't work. Uh, so I think for at least this year, um, we're going to have to use the system the way it is, but I think it'll still work. I think it'll work really well. We just need to start promoting it. Also, just to let you know, Vic, while you're here, I have been keeping the Facebook page itself active. So, uh, you may want to direct people to the Facebook page, like people maybe you don't know as well. The group is cool, but uh, to build the haunt up over the next few years, you really want to uh, direct people to the Facebook page and not the group. And then if the people that are on the page want to come and see some behind the scenes stuff, uh, you can direct them to the group. Just an idea. But if you use, I think, like I said, if you use like a, a not a watered down, but just a slightly thinner latex paint, because uh, latex you can get back off those things pretty easy. You know, if you want to just sit there and peel it right back off, it's like, oh, this sucks. But uh, I think that would add some creepiness and color to your uh, light strands. Very cool though. Everything's looking really good. So, Danny says, it was fine, fun to see Mark. It was a weird trip for me, though. Just had to make some changes from my usual HHN trips. I didn't get to do as much as I wanted, but I'll live. Danny, are you, are, since you got the Rush of Fear Pass, are you going to go back sometime in September? Or was this the only trip? Since it seems like Mark's gonna go every every weekend or something. <laughs> uh, of the houses you went to, anything stand out? How are the scare zones in your in your opinion? Which we value very highly here. For realsies. Ah, trying to figure that out now. Gotcha. Well, since you have the Rush of Fear Pass, you know, that's cool because if, if you decide to go back, uh, you can go, I guess it works for the rest of September. I keep thinking to myself, I, I don't really see anything about HHN, but I'm also not in any of the groups anymore except the drama page. Uh, Danny says, I really like the Pumpkin House and loved the Puppet Theater. Oh, sweet. Uh, Danny, of the 10 houses, how many were you able to go through? Were you able to go through all of them? And if not, did you specifically avoid a few of them in case you couldn't make the ones you wanted to go through? Uh, oh, Danny says, only through the 26, and that kind of sucks. Well... 
I mean, that's two more weeks. If you decide. How much was the how much was the rush of fear pass? I know that the frequent fear pass was like what one one fifty nine or something, which is not not bad. Hey Mark, just talking about you too. Mark, do you, you have fun seeing Danny? Do you have fun at uh, HHN with Danny? Look like y'all were having fun. Excuse me. Danny says, I did, ooh, couldn't focus my eyes. I did five. The two I mentioned before, Texas Chainsaw, Legendary Truth, and Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, super cool. Do you have to use a express pass or was that all just regular in line, in line waiting? And was it pretty crowded or how were the lines, how were the wait times? <laughs> Mark says, well, I had fun at HHN and then there was Danny, haha. -ha. No express. Would you go? Uh, would you go two nights, Danny, or three? I can't remember. I know you told us, but I can't remember. Yeah, and there's some of the houses that do look, do look like they're a bit of fun. Not enough for me to go this year, but I just got, I've got too much on my plate, plus licking the poles, plus pandemic. Uh, see, Danny said, I had big plans for the second night, but then my sister and I decided to ride all of Harry Potter rides instead, and then my feet and ankles couldn't hang. Only two nights. I had big plans for the second night, but my sister and I decided to ride all the Harry Potter rides. Well, that's cool. To me, you know, the Harry Potter rides will be there, you know, for many moons to come. I, I, I would have just gone ahead and gone through more houses. But that's just me. The only ride that uh, back in the day, moons ago, was uh, the Mummy. I'm like, I gotta ride the mummy. Even though it's an in, it's a dark ride, it's inside, I gotta ride the mummy. But I also I also used to go five nights. You know, I'd get a I'd get a frequent fear pass and I'd go back when they weren't doing like there was only like one or two weeks where there'd be a, like a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. And I would go like every single night, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He says, I just had to do the parks with him along with trying to do HHN, and I'm just recently recovered from Rona. Oh, my God. So is, you, had, you, had, you had COVID? When the hell did that happen? Did you tell us? What the fuck? Danny? I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're better. Holy crap. Hey, I see monsters. Uh... Yeah, that's true. Uh, I see, uh, Keith, your uh, tripod turned out really, your cauldron tripod turned out really good. They said, I never get to do the big rides. I'm never there with my one sister. So it was just a bigger deal for us to do it all together. That's cool. Got to do the mummy. God, I just, I would love to be on the mummy right now. I would just love to, like, eat a bunch of park food, especially mythos, and just ride the mummy ride until I just flung off the ride or something. Got got caught like in the building somewhere and they'd find my skeleton like 20 days later. I'm kidding. I could just I could just ride the mummy nonstop. But I do actually miss roller coasters in general since I haven't been on one in forever. 
I got to get my fill in before I get too much older, I guess. Ha. <laughs> Jay says, no, LOL. No, I didn't talk about it. Both him and I got it. He's back to normal and I'm doing pretty good. Just not 100%. Holy shit. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm, as you know, I'm glad that you're okay. I'm glad you and him are both okay. So, just know you can still get your vaccine shot. <laughs> Even though you've had it, you have to wait a little bit, but. Should you decide, never hurts. Well, that's good. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're okay. I'm glad you and Em are both okay. So, as you as you can imagine. Mark says, "I keep trying to tell you, don't want mythos. Don't let what it became today ruin your memories." Well, yeah, I know. But if I was there. I would have I would have to go. And that's fine. Because then I'd be like, well, this used to be better, but I'm glad I went. And I'll I'll get something at Mythos, and if it's disappointing, I'll eat it and then go get a Ricker Burger. <laughs> um I would have to go though, Mark. I'd have to go at least once. I mean, normally when I would go, I'd go several times, but you know, if I just went the once and I was like, well, the, Mark is right. This is sucks. But I'm glad I went. And hopefully they don't tear it down anytime, time, anytime soon. Mark, I am a white knight when it comes to mythos. I have to, I will admit that. And I will say you are absolutely right. Danny says, we actually had mythos booked for yesterday, but I was so tired and my ankles feet hurt so bad. We canceled and got fast food on the way home. And he says they just went to Mythos in June and it was awesome. Like I said, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to go. If I was there, I would be like, I have to go to Mythos. I would have to go. And then, like I said, if I was disappointed, then at least I was forewarned, Mark, by you. But um, I, I, if I was in the park, I'd, I'd have to go. And I'd have to eat a lot of food. And like I said, if it ended up sucking. I'll go grab something else. I get a Richter burger, or I would just get a, get a huge brownie with ice cream or whatever the hell from uh, Seuss Landing or Seuss Land. Well, that just said no data. That's some BS right there. Um, honestly, at this point, since it's been a long time since I've gone, I'd probably go eat everywhere which I, I typically don't do when I go to the theme parks. Jay says, I also liked Eddie's Scare Zone, but the rest of them were meh. Jim, Jim uh, for those of you who know, who, who know Jim, uh, he is a uh, Hard Nights aficionado. Um, yeah, he wasn't too impressed. But I think he kind of agreed with a couple of us that all they're doing is recycling all their stuff for their 30th anniversary. Danny, you've never been to Richter Burger? It, to me, it's actually good. Now, it may not be as good. This may be a place, like I have to do a mark here. It may not be as good as it used to be moons ago, but you know, back in the day, you go to Richter Burger and they, you order whatever, and then you, you've got the, the uh, make-it-yourself bar, and you put whatever the hell you want to on it and eat it, and it was good. I doubt they're doing that now, though, but don't quote me on it. I just enjoyed Richter Burger because it was open during Horror Nights, and I'm like, yeah, okay, well, let's get a burger. And it was just, it was fun. Or we'd go to Mel's. You know, Richter Burger didn't seem to be as, as uh, busy as Mel. Everybody knew Mel's. Not a lot of people knew Richter Burger was there. So we're like, yeah, let's go to Richter Burger. We do that and then do some more stuff, close the park out, and typically end up at that 24-hour uh, McDonald's because we were still hungry. Or it was some of the places it was 24 hours, like a, was it a Waffle House? It's something else. Typically, we just end up at the McDonald's because it was just a hoot. And then we just drive south on International and go back to International Sand Lake and the hotel at that corner. 
where I stayed for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. After I realized that AAA, you could get super discount. Once I got AAA, you get super discounts for places in Orlando. And I didn't have to stay in Kissimmee to get cheap, cheap rooms, <laughs> which is always fun. No complaints, though. Just staying in Kissimmee was fun at the time. I think I did that for like two years. Maybe three. But, and maybe next year, uh, you know, next year we're still full speed ahead doing a uh, Orlando Informer uh, when it's cooler in the winter. So, that'll be a little over a year. Should be fun. And he says, next year I'm going to try and leave him at home for my HHN trip, just so I'm not having to do double duty with the walking. Gotcha. Excuse me. Well, maybe you let Mark babysit uh, this year and go on your own. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think, um, I think at the beginning of next year is when we'll start getting hot and heavy about talking about it. Uh, you know, we'll get James back on here. Hopefully, oh, hopefully he'll be popping back in here in a couple weeks. We'll see. He said that uh, it may be like October or so. I know listening to just me yippity yap and is getting probably old. Um, the whole plan of having a bunch of guests on here, I think, went to the wayside just because uh, it's easier for James to do all the clickety clacking than for me to. I'd still like to get 13 skeletons on here one more time before he gets super busy in October. I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could wing that on my own with my limited jiggle bits of bandwidth. The technology part I've got down really, really well, but I have limited jiggle bits. <laughs> limited jiggle bits because I've got no good internet around me. Yay! Oh, Danny says, Mark gave me one of 13's books for M. He loves it. They do seem to be really, 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 really cool. Danny uh, do, do, says, do you want to do one or two nights? I don't know. I'm all for the extended merriment. Do, do they do two nights? I thought, was it, or wait, I thought the Orlando Informer thing was just one night. Or am I wrong? Or do they do two nights if they get super booked with one night? I know that if I go down there, uh, it's not going to be just for, I mean, I'll, I'll try to plan it out for probably a full week. Just, just so I can, because I would actually like to go to Epcot. Um, and I'm hoping that Guardians of the Galaxy will be done, even though I'm going to miss World of Energy. But... Um, Usually it's a whole weekend. Oh, okay. Well, then the whole weekend then. I, I mean, three sometimes. Eh. Like I said, we just have to. We'll have to when they when they put it out there. We'll have to play it by ear. I know for sure that it won't be. I, I guess their summertime one because hot and heat and hurricanes and shit. Um, it would definitely have to be cooler. Um, weather. So we'll just have to play it by ear and see what they announce. Uh, I guess they announce all that stuff like at the beginning of the year. I guess I don't know. I've been following it for a while, but I can't. I can't really remember. Um, but I'm almost positive though that if I go down there, when I go down there, um, I'll be there for a week. I mean, I I'd like to go to some of the parks during the day. Um, or, or I may just decide to do it all at night during the meetup. I, like I said, I, I kind of I kind of need to get through this hurricane season and Halloween before my brain <laughs> my brain will work work correctly for next year. But I do believe that's the thing. 
Then he says, I'll have to leave M home for that. I'm not paying for him to only write E.T. and Sue stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it'll be a good it'll be a good outing for you. And you know, there's if Mark will be there, there'll be some I won't be, but there'll be some imbibing, so um. Um, but that I think that's my plan because I really, I, I, it would be cool to go down for Halloween Horror Nights next year. Uh, it, that of course all depends on. Oh my God, the pandemic, Jesus Christ. Um, and if they're doing anything cool, I, I've I've finally have determined that if if HHN is not doing anything that I care about, there's no reason to go. I'd rather save the money and go do, start doing some haunted attractions I've never been to before. Take a road trip and um, hit up some haunted attractions that I've not done before. Um, but I really, really, I really feel the need to get on some roller coasters at, at, uh, at uh, Universal and Eyes of Adventure. And by then, there'll be several things that I have not been on. I mean, there'll be Several things that I have not, it'll be new to me. And that's, that's cool. It'll be worth the price. Uh, you know, aside from seeing everybody in person, uh, it'll be worth the price um, going to things I haven't seen. And like I said, hopefully Epcot will have done most of the renovations. Because uh, I, I myself very much like Epcot. It's, uh, it's, very, it's a lot of nostalgia for me since I opened that place up. 300 years ago. Opened it up before it was officially opened up. Speaking of nostalgic stuff that I've, I've refound from the opening day of Epcot, that stuff I'll never get rid of. But we only have one of it. But that, but the, the the long story short with your question, Danny, is it depends on what everybody decides to do. If folks are like one night, one night, two nights, two nights, three nights, three nights, um, I'll go with the flow. I just know that I, regardless, I'll end up spending extra days in Orlando to do, you know, um, other thingamajigs. Mark says, I have the opening day cast member medallion. That's pretty cool, actually. I have a collection of opening day stuff specific to guests. Uh, no cast member stuff, but. Um, and I actually have a photo album, pictures that I took. Uh, um. I was fascinated with Spaceship Earth. Oh my God, I must have 15, 20 pictures just of that damn thing. It always, I've always been a picture person. And it always like, I wish we had digital cameras back then, which would be the 80s, because um, I would have taken buttloads of pictures, even more so than I did then. Um, thank God, Kodak was one of the sponsors, whatever it was a sponsor of. Um, Damn it, now I can't remember because there was a shop underneath Spaceship Earth. It was a Kodak shop where you could go buy film. <laughs> and I was like, I need some more film. This I was like 14 years old. I'm like, I need some more film. Okay. We went to, and I'd had to be sure that I didn't lose the ones that I took, put them in the little canister, go back to the, the hotel room, and I'd have a, a black bag I would put them in, and then came back here and had them developed. Somewhere. And I still have the negatives. Unless they're, the negatives may be ruined by now. I don't know. Then he says, I miss Epcot almost more than Magic Kingdom been a year and a half. Yeah, see, that's my thing is if, 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 I had, if I went down there and said, Mike, you have a choice of going to Magic Kingdom or Epcot, but you can't go to both, which one do you want? I'd be like, Epcot. Hands down. Um... 
if they said you have a choice between Magic Kingdom and uh, Animal Kingdom, it'd be Magic Kingdom. Animal Kingdom would be the last on my list. Although it may have gotten... I was there, I, was, I, went to, uh, I went to Animal Kingdom for one full day a week after its initial opening, after its grand opening. And that was just a disaster. It was, God, it was hot as hell. Jesus, what a, oh my God, they had no shade. They were serving beer. There was people passed out all over the place. The infirmary was full because people were having heat strokes and drinking too much and then having heat strokes. The, the buddy I was with, um, he wasn't drinking, but it was so damn hot. He was kind of a thin fella. He actually, he's like, Mike, I don't feel so good. I'm like, you don't look good. I had to take him to the infirmary, and it was full. I was like, my God. And then there was, that was back when they didn't know how to keep the animals, and they were dying off left and right. You got on the safari, whatever the hell, and none of the animals came out because it was too damn hot. It was a nightmare. Animal Kingdom was a nightmare the week after it opened. Just let you know. Mark says, I love uh, Animal Kingdom, Everest, Dinosaur, Safari, and Great Beer. Animal Kingdom, I guarantee you, has changed a lot since I was there. Whatever the hell year it opened, which I can't remember, I was still living in Gainesville. My friend and I, who he worked for Disney, um, we went to Animal Kingdom a week, like five days after the grand opening. And it was... Horrendous. I don't remember much about any of it because, it, I mean, we did everything. We got there. The parking lot was empty. We parked right in the front. We got there an hour after it opened that day. We had done everything twice, and we left, and it was still early afternoon. I mean, the park was going to be open for hours more, and we're just like, this is, we're done. I remember... I don't even know what the hell ride it was. A Bug's Life? I think it was a Bug's Life. And the, the, the bench seating, it was long bench seating. Maybe that's still there. And it was supposed to be like you're sitting in like carved out wood or some crap. And the dividers were these humps in the wood. Like, and you couldn't see. It was, God, it was terrible. And I remember I sat down and it wasn't like it was packed. So I just arbitrarily sat down, but I sat down in the wrong spot and that divider knot where it was supposed to be like seats whacked me literally in the entirety of my spine. I mean, I sat down kind of hard and that knot literally shoved my entire spine like up into my sternum. I'm like, oh my God, what? I was like, I was literally like in tears. Like, I think I just broke my spine on this ride. And it doesn't move. It was just horrendous. It was a bug's life, and it's not better. God, that was because the the, the quote unquote knots that were that made up the seats, like literally, you were just supposed to sit between the knots. It was just you could. I, oh my God, you could not see the day. I I had no idea, and I just plopped down, and literally that thing, freaking the length of my spine was the length of that knot. And I just remember, I was like, I have either damaged something <laughs> of myself or, and I, I remember I hit it and like kind of gave out a yelp and then it slid me into the seat I was supposed to be in. And my buddy, Jim, he hadn't sat down yet. He's like, what happened? I'm like, be careful sitting down. I said, these seats suck. And then he felt and he's like, Jesus, did you just, I'm like, yes, that went literally directly in my spine. I was, God, I was pissed. I thought the Tree of Life was really cool, though. I mean, that was just a really, just a, it was like an art installment. But none of the animal and the, whoever was doing the driving or the whatever, they're like, yeah, I think that it's too hot for the animals to be out. So we were looking at dirt and tumbleweeds and bullshit. <laughs> I was like, where are the animals? And then like, the day after that or something, there was a big news story like a bunch of animals died in the park from heat exhaustion. It was just, God, it was horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. I'm sure it's much better now and there's all kinds of cool things and I'm sure they make all kinds of money, but I don't know. That, that was definitely my, 
I'm, I'm good. I'm good with not going back to Animal Kingdom for a while. And we didn't go back. My buddy Jim said, he was, this is a terrible Disney park. He's like, oh, my God. He's like, it'll be closed in five years. I'm like, all right, well, we're not going back. We ended up going to, we had a park hopper. And we left there after I did some spine stretches in the parking lot. And I think we ended up going to Disney, uh, to Magic Kingdom. Ooh, it's a quarter after. We'll do the stream till the bottom of the hour, and then I'll let y'all go. Um, since everybody got here, not I want to say late because you weren't really late, but I kind of was talking to myself for about fifteen minutes, which is fine. That's fine. It means you didn't miss anything. Um, but I very much, I very much enjoyed Epcot. I, I just, like I said, for me, it's a nostalgia. I know a lot of people hate it. They're like, ah, oh, it's so boring. They don't get the idea of it. I knew that I knew that World of Energy wouldn't be there forever. Um, it, it hurt my heart seeing the solar panels ripped off the building, especially since they were still pretty efficient. The last time I, the last time I went there, I asked somebody, and they... They actually said, yeah, the, the solar panels. And he gave me a number, like, I think he said 76% efficient from when they were installed and it was the original panels. I'm like, that's really cool because that was a long-ass time ago. And I gave him the quick story about it. He's like, that's really cool that you were opening down. I'm like, I know. I said, actually, we were a bunch of testers, too. So we were, we were breaking down all the rides, including Spaceship Earth, which I know was supposed to go through refurbishment, too, but I think they canceled that. I don't know. Um... Like I said, Epcot just holds a special place in my heart just because I, I went there at the age of 14 when during grand opening and then a few days before the grand opening. So I feel like it's cool to open up a, any sort of Disney park. But, uh, but I'm glad the beer is good at uh, Animal Kingdom, Mark. That's, that's good to know since I don't drink it. Uh, I don't even, like I said, I don't even remember what the hell rides were there. I just know that Bugs Life almost paralyzed me. <laughs> Not really. God, that was terrible. I don't even know if we ate there. God, I don't want, Jesus, that was forever. Hey, welcome back, Keith. Yeah, we're still, we're still rolling. I told everybody we would stick around to the bottom of the hour. We're talking about Animal Kingdom and Epcot and Disney and How sucky Animal Kingdom was the week after it opened. How awesome Epcot was, is, and we're being been. Um, Animal Kingdom, is it still hot? I just know that, I just know that what we realized was there was no shade. The most, the most horrific thing Oh my God, I think I've told you all this story like twice already, but most we, we just realized that they were selling beer. A lot of people were drinking beer, a lot of kids there. There was no shade whatsoever. Um, and we passed by this bench and there was this little kid who would be, he was no taller than waist height to me. And his dad was passed out on the bench, no shade. And was, the, the, was still holding on to the kid's hand. And the kid was just looking around like he didn't know what to do. And the guy was laying on the bench, passed out. Not drunk, but like heat stroke. So uh, my buddy said, let me go find a cast member. He said, you stay here. And uh, brought like two cast members over. And they, they had to, I don't know, call the infirmary squad or whatever to come and get him uh jesus uh it, it was just that was horrific because that kid wasn't crying but looked literally like horrified like did not know what was going on and of course was standing in the heat next to their passed out dad it's like oh shit this place is bullshit mark says uh, animal kingdom is still brutally hot why is it so hot I mean, I know it's Florida, but is it the way it was built? 
It, have they put any shade in whatsoever? I'm telling you, when I say there was no shade, <laughs> it was no shade. Unless you were in the safari ride or cracking your spine in Bug's Life or whatever the hell other things. I, there may have been other rides. I also remember there weren't many rides either. We were just like, you know, they really opened this place with not a lot of shit to do except have a heat stroke and drink beer. I mean, I, I don't even think we ate there. God, that was a long time ago. Sometime in the 90s, mid to late 90s. That's forever ago. I really was impressed with the Tree of Life, though. That was actually pretty cool. The Tree of Life, I'm sure, was like Spaceship for Animal Kingdom, was like Spaceship Earth for Epcot, or, you know, Cinderella's Castle at Magic Kingdom. But for God's sake, to put some shade in. Plant some trees. Put an umbrella up. Stop selling beer in the middle of the summer. I don't care. Oh, my God. This is bringing back memories. of, And, and I, I can still see in my head the parking lot. I remember we, pulled, we were in a rental car, and we pulled up, and my buddy was like, where are the cars? <laughs> I'm like, are you sure this place is open? He's like, yeah, it's open. I mean, there was like... We thought, like, I don't know. And uh, we hadn't gotten tickets yet, so we walked up, got tickets. And like, is it open? Like, oh, yeah, it's open. I mean, there were cars there, but it was just like, literally, we parked up so close to the front. We, we were just, I mean, I don't know. And since he worked for Disney, he now, he now lives in uh, California, but since he worked for Disney, he was just like, this place just opened. It should be packed. Um, Mark says, no idea why Animal Kingdom is so hot. Whole park is trees and shade. Still brutal. Well, apparently there's more trees, trees and shade than when it first opened, because I am telling you. Of course, they've had 20 years or so to grow. Mark says, only takes 20 minutes, 20 minute walk to even see the tree, though. Well, that's, yeah, that's true, too. He says, a workspace is a start. Yes, I'm thinking we're going back half hour ago to when we were talking about the, the shed. <laughs> That's my guess. But yes, yes, Keith, you're right. I'm looking forward to, um, when I built that shed, it was very functional and everything else, and it just slowly became a huge outdoor storage closet with a little bit of workspace. So I'm, I'm look, finally looking forward to getting it back into shape because I did not to not to pat myself on the back I did build that thing like a fortress for some weird reason um, I mean it's it's built very well if I do say so myself and I built a 16 by 24 foot huge shed tall and it was all about twenty one hundred dollars uh you you can't even you couldn't even put a roof on it for twenty one hundred dollars and it's got roll roofing it's got marine grade tar paper and roll roofing and it's it's phenomenal i really i really 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 am looking forward to taking a deep breath and and getting back to getting it back in shape Uh, yeah, Vic was here. I think. Unless I've lost my mind. Unless I'm confusing everybody, which is par for the course for me. It's highly likely, by the way, I will eventually make my way back to Animal Kingdom. Um, it's just not a high priority for obvious reasons. I know they've had a lot of births there. Of course, they you know they killed off quite a few of them accidentally in the beginning. I just remember, God, the news reports were just so brutal about that. Disney's Animal Kingdom just opened, and they've reported two dead lions and a hippo. And a... 
giraffe and the dur dur and they're missing this animal and they found it and I mean it was just brutal. The the report was brutal. It wasn't just like one animal, by the way, either. And people were like, Oh my god, are you not feeding them or do you not know what you're doing? Or <laughs> maybe you should put them back in the wild and just make everything animatronics. Oh my god, the comments back then before there was social media was just hilarious. And that was just me talking to friends of mine. And my friend that went with me to Animal Kingdom, he's like, ah, maybe they shouldn't have a zoo. Maybe they shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Kind of too late for some of the animals to know. No, or think about that. It's sad. I'm, I'm not laughing because they killed a bunch of, or didn't kill them, but they definitely, for some reason, did not have all their ducks in a row bringing safari animals to Florida. But it looks like they've learned. So, I don't think Universal will be making that mistake. <laughs> they should have just kept, kept with the feral cat population feeding themselves. Oh my God, Animal Kingdom. But uh, yeah, I will. Uh, let's see, was it? Oh, wait. <laughs> Mark said, oh no, we killed them. Well, it's just, I don't know. We did see a few animals. I think we did see an actual lion, a uh, male lion, way the hell off in the distance, under, underneath the only shade that you could see in the whole safari. We, that was the other thing, too, is we're like, there's not a lot of shade for the animals. I don't know if they could go back into a cave or, but people, the people that were on the, the, the tour thing, I mean, they were, they were questioning that the, the tour guide pretty, pretty hard. Not me, but they're like, you see that little lion over there, way over there on a rock underneath a very sparse bush. <laughs> and uh, he just, you could, his tongue was like way the hell out there. And we're like, Hmm. We did. I think we saw one or two giraffes, but they were same thing. They were like they wanted to come say hello and get some niblets, but they were like, "Shit, we've got to, we've got to crouch underneath this short ass tree. It's hot." And they're like, "Where the hell are we? This isn't like Africa. It's hotter than Africa here." What? No, sir, it's Florida, Mr. Giraffe. Like, oh my God, how did we get here? It was just, it was really brutal. Poor things. But other than that, I'm telling you, we were just like, okay. Not too many animals in the kingdom that day. And apparently, apparently some of them had crossed the Rainbow Bridge before we got there. And then after we got there. But we'll leave that alone for Animal Kingdom. I don't know. But um, we'll take the last two minutes to do our normal uh, farewell and adieu and Aveda Zane goodbye. Um, We'll be back on Wednesday uh, for uh, anybody that came in late. What you see on the screen, I'll probably be showing again next Wednesday. I'm going to promote the hell out of my home haunt and the website and the uh, stores and the eBay stuff I'm going to be putting on there for Halloween, uh, my, my duplicate vintage, whatever the hell's. Um, I've got to get I've got to get rid of some of my inventory here in the house but uh, and uh, pushing the YouTube channel as well. But uh, I'll definitely be back on Wednesday night. So if you're inclined and you want to stop by, you know, I always love seeing y'all. Uh, I'll have more Halloween stuff. We did talk about Halloween stuff at the beginning for anybody that got here late. Um, it wasn't just a Animal Kingdom bash parade tonight. Um, but uh, most definitely... Um, Good night, Mark. We'll see you Wednesday. But, um, yeah, we'll wind it down. Uh, be sure everybody be safe. Enjoy yourselves. We are getting into the thick of the haunt season. Um, so, um, I don't know why you, they're saying no data again. Stupid ass thing. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and this will be a Sunday, not Monday stream after Wednesday. But, um, everybody, as usual, uh, and I'll say this as I always do from James and myself, you all make this stream. 
for the over year and a half we've been doing it. It's been a lot of fun and will continue being a lot of fun, maybe more stuff in the, in the future, uh, Halloween-wise. Get James back on here. Wait, Dane says, I promised him I would take him on a Halloween decoration tour tomorrow. Wish me luck. Sprint home. Sprint home. Oh, very good. I see. Till Wednesday then. Good night. Danny, good night. Keith, good night. Um, but anyway, we'll uh, leave you be. Uh, as always, stay safe. Thanks again, everybody. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you Wednesday night. And uh, end of line. <laughs>